Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's Builder Series. Uh, we're coming here live from Nigeria. I've got Imek Imaka Wosu, CEO and co-founder of Scalex, a crypto to fiat payment gateway provider for Africa. Based in Nigeria, but they've got co-founders in London and Dubai. Here to tell us how they're helping to spread the ease and accessibility of USDC all around Africa is Imaku. Imaku, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Sam. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit about your journey into Web3. Okay, uh, I mean, I started as a... Uh, I started with a bank in the banking sector in Nigeria right after my youth service, which is like a one-year mandatory paramilitary training every graduate has to go through. And uh, coming out of that, I was I got my first placement was in the bank, and at the time, uh, the bank was looking to implement yeah. a whole of you know e-business related digital solutions, so POS, ATM terminals, etc. And uh, so I think that was the first. Um, foundation or baseline for me jumping into, you know, financial solutions as it may be and uh, driving those solutions in the country and trying to ensure that we got our chance to actually, you know, adapt, adopt these solutions um, was part of our, you know, core um, activities at the time. So, of course, um, that was Enterprise Bank, which is now called Heritage Bank. I think they were acquired. They changed their name, something like that. And uh, after that, I moved to another top bank, which was Diamond Bank. And uh, in Diamond Bank, I worked to the channels department before moving to business development. So, yes, I would say I've been in the banking sector uh, for the latter part of the last um, 10 years before pivoting into tech. Thank you. Nice, nice, nice. I, I I love to see when people come into this space with that sort of background. Um, tell us, I mean, what motivated you uh, to build Scalex? What were you seeing throughout your experience with the banking sector, and just as a regular, you know, citizen yourself, um, that motivated you to create Scalex? So I, I think um, before I would say what motivated us to build Scalex, I think it's it's more about. I mean, in the banking sector. Uh, one thing I observed was that were basically underserved, you know, sectors or segments in the market. People weren't getting some level of um, solutions they would get, you know, adequately. Uh, one of such things was remittance was still pretty much like very, very difficult at the time. And um, of course, the banks didn't have like very, very ample solutions to handle that. So it was pretty much handled by, you know, foreign players. And um, so remittance was a problem. Cross-border payments was a problem. We saw a lot of merchants having to struggle to access FX to make these payments. But then that wasn't really what, you know, was that wasn't the pivotal you know, point for me coming into Web3. I got interested in blockchain um, just at sometime 2016, 2017. And for me, it was about, this was a tech that promised a better financial infrastructure. I mean, I was really like passionate. So I was taking, I was really, really excited about the whole decentralized aspect of Bitcoin, whereby it's peer-to-peer -peer ownership, borderless, and coming from a very, very centralized ecosystem where individuals didn't have the freedom to control their, you know, finances or payments or access to financial solutions. It actually drove my interest in the space. Then I think uh, come 2020, I've been, I and my co-founders, we've been in the blockchain space. We traded. We've bought assets, etc. But in some time, 2021, uh, there was like this boom in the ecosystem, and uh, the central bank in Nigeria kind of like clamped down on the exchanges in the ecosystem, the Binances and everybody. So it was like everybody was scrambling to find out the best solution where they could convert their fiat to crypto and crypto back to fiat. And I think at that point, that was when we identified that there was a bottleneck. People were getting scammed off, you know, informal peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, and that was where. Skelex came in. That was our first solution, the first V1 of Skelex, which was an automated peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where people wouldn't be scammed whenever they are trying to convert their fiat assets to cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrencies back to um, fiat. So um, that was basically the first entrance for us into the cryptocurrency um, space. And uh, sometime in 2021, I think that was when we came across um, the African lead of FTX. And... Uh, FTX at the time, they were having challenges in Nigeria because their users are having to go to Binance peer-to-peer -to -peer marketplace to get stable coins before transferring it out. 
So FTS at the time was having a lot of challenges in Nigeria because their users were unable to, you know, easily and seamlessly buy, you know, stable coins and transfer it to their exchange. And uh, this was because at the time in the continent or in the Nigeria at the time, on ramps were basically non-existent. So peer-to-peer marketplaces were the only places individuals could get, you know, asset, access to stable coins. And for us at the time, we got to realize that that in itself it was a solution for retail, but for Web3 projects, decentralized applications, wallets, ETC, it's a big problem because what now happens is you're exposing your users to a whole lot of fraud because these guys could go to any peer-to-peer marketplace and they might not actually get their assets. It was a big deal. So what we realized was that mm. that was a critical you know, infrastructure that wasn't available in the space. Um, so at the time we said, okay, hey, we're going to build out this ramp infrastructure for you guys and we'll see how it will go. And we built out that solution. We launched with um, the FTS community in January of 2022. And I, I think that was the first time where we actually got a whole lot of traction. Our retail numbers grew from about 500 to over 15,000 users. And we are basically processing a lot of transactions. And I would mm-hmm. say at that point, we now got to realize that this was actually a core problem because we saw a lot of projects reaching out to us saying, hey, we had you guys do this. We need this. And at the time, we didn't really understand what the problems were. So we dug in a bit deeper and this was what we realized. Access to on-demand stablecoin liquidity via API is a problem. Like I said earlier, it was non-existent. Two, Mm. for a wallet infrastructure or for any project to actually have their users being able to process these payments, there has to be that payment infrastructure rail as well. So one thing is the blockchain aspect of things. The other one is the Web2 or traditional payment rails aspect of the things. So looking at all that, you know, all that problem in the ecosystem, what we did was we said, hey, we were going to build a a gateway that did two things. One, provided access to stablecoin liquidity on one side, and on the other side, provide payment and fiat payment trails. So by merging this together, that was basically what gave birth to Scalex on and off-ramp infrastructure as we know it right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that that's great. I mean, I remember when I went to I went to Nigeria last year. I remember, you know, the stepping outside of the airport, there were people on the side of the street with just a bunch of Nara. You know, just like literally hand to hand exchanging, you know, dollars to Naira on the streets. And I thought on one end, wow, that's a service. On the other end, how do you know if you're being, you know, screwed or not, right? You're taking advantage. You have no idea if you're just traveling there. Exactly. And so to know that this tool exists is is interesting. Explain to the, the listeners, why is this? You know, so, okay, there's a problem. You saw the demand. But why? Like, who are the users? What is, you know, what are they um, in need of, let's say, USDC to Naira? Like, why is that important? What are the typical use cases? Okay. So, um, typically, with at the time when we started with FTX, it was just pretty much exchanges, enabling this exchange, their users to convert their fiat to stable coins, to, be, to enable them to trade on the platform, beat spot trading, um, futures, ETC. And when they want to take out their profits. Okay, so one, so one is one is trading. Yeah, one is trading. Then as we got started to get more uh, interest, okay. we now started seeing that we had players in remittance as well. Because, I mean, um, I'm, I'm building a, a USDT-based remittance solution from North America to Africa. So basically, um, someone is sending USDC down to someone in Nigeria, and the person needs to swap it out. So what our infrastructure has enabled such wallets or remittance solutions to do is it cannot be end-to-end. Uh, the, the initiator from the U.S. can basically use Stripe or, which, or Circle, Coinbase, get USDC, transfer it down to um, the user here down in Nigeria. And what that user does can just off-ramp it directly without having to you know, go to, you don't need to be like crypto savvy to use our checkout infrastructure, for instance. You don't need to have a Binance account. You don't need to go through all that complexity. Just use the um, Skelex checkout, pulling that USDC, putting your bank account number, and you get paid within seconds. So this was one of the um, use cases we saw with remittance guys. That's- wait, 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 pause. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. 
So you're saying to me that, you know, here in the United States, I could open up uh, a Coinbase wallet, put USDC in there. It's simple. It's free. I can just go ahead and, and turn my dollars into USDC instantaneously. And then I can send that to you or to anybody in Nigeria, and they can off-ramp into their bank accounts within minutes? Exactly. Exactly. So what we did, we built our APIs for this. Wow. And we also have a checkout infrastructure for more retail-based users. So um, we're trying to be B2B you know, first, but we understand that we started as a retail-facing solution. So each time we build out a B2B solution, we try to ensure we have a front end for retail users as well. So of course, when we get to the demo, I'll show you how the checkout works and we'll convert some VSDs into fiat, yeah. Man, well, let's go ahead and hop right into it because you, you got me really interested to see how this works and I'm sure the listeners as well. Okay, great. So um, this is basically the, um, the checkout. So um, basically checkout.scalex.africa and uh, it has two options here, the buy crypto and the sell crypto. So um, for the sell crypto, which is pretty much like an offer, uh, what I do is I click on it. And it loads up. Uh, select USDC. So we have two networks, Polygon and Solana. So we're going to use Solana. Um, I select my currency because we are currently live in Nigeria. And I, I can put in, okay, say five USDC. Uh, then it gives me the fee, 0.25% fee, plus a fixed fee of $5. Then, of course, it shows me the amount I'm expecting, which is 5,118.53 Kobo. And, of course, the ongoing rate at that point in time. And I submit. So, of course, it takes me through some level of authentication. So, I need to put my email address. So, the, the brilliant thing about this is we did some, you know, a little bit of research with users to find out um, what volumes that users can. We basically like if you're if you're doing say twenty dollars and below, you don't necessarily have to go through very stringent KYC. You just need to provide your phone number, email verification, and you're good to go. So once you put your email, it sends me an OTP, which I just have to copy from my email address. Uh, on that, paste that, I verify the code. So um, I could add my bank or I have a, I already have my bank saved here. So each time you complete a KYC and use a bank account number, the system saves that account number. So you don't have to always impute that account number each time you want to do an off ramp. So I select my back number. It basically shows me the summary, um, how much I'm selling the USDC, the amount, the rates, you know, all of that. Then, of course, my receiving bank account. Then it authorizes me to pay the five USDC. So this is where basically um, all the magic works. So the, the, the good thing about this is um, if I receive that USDC, say, in my Phantom wallet or in my Skelex wallet, in my Metamax, all I just have to do is probably just copy my wallet address, go to the wallet or do that transfer. I could actually even send this wallet if I'm directly in contact with the person that wants to make that remittance to me. I can give them my wallet and they can just make that transfer to me. So go to my Phantom wallet. So I have about 10 USDC here. Um, I'll transfer that um, to the wallet address. By USDC. Next. Send. This is my bank account. So basically, I've received that one instantly. So basically, it's like seconds immediately. On. Yeah. On. So real. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. So that's the, that's the magic we've done in Scalex. We put in a lot of work to ensure that this, this is possible because remittance is like a very, very big deal when it comes to um, the tons and thousands, millions of Nigerians in diaspora. And um, pretty much we picked USDC because USDC, especially on Solana, gave us the ability to you know, ensure that we got this. 
And so really, that's pretty much how we got to this point where, you know, we handle off, on and off ramps. And um, remittance companies have kind of like been our core target at this point in time, because for us, this is like a game changer in the ecosystem. And yeah, and we're really, really driving this going forward. Wow. That was really uh, amazing. I, I tell you, it, it's, it, it excites me. You know, we work, I mean, every day we got our, our heads down, working hard. These are the type of videos that... I, I like sending to people that are working with us, right? Like sending it to, you know, from our CEO, CMOs, you know, for to all the way to the, you know, the folks that are answering customer service calls. Yeah. Because it's it's like you, you work every single day and they're not able to see what what <laughs> I'm fortunate to see is, yeah. you know, hey y'all, this is this this is what we're working for. This is this is real magic happening as you meant as you mentioned. Um how uh, just just to wrap things up here i mean how how much how important is easy access to the to the us dollar through usdc for people in nigeria how important is that um i mean like it's 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 super important because it it, it cuts across a whole lot of um businesses and individual needs i mean like this could be remittance for um that kid looking to pay his next school fees or for that guy who is making a purchase of real estate in Nigeria, he needs to send funds back or someone building a property and they need to pay the, you know, artisans working on the site. It, it costs across a whole lot. Um, it, it could even go as far as um, someone looking to pay, um, pay for, you know, for, for retail products. I mean, it's, it, it varies a whole lot. Uh, one of the, needs um, on the retail side are people who are trying to hedge because I mean, we're in a country where unfortunately our currencies are devaluating very, very fast. I mean, like over 30% this year alone. And a lot of businesses in Nigeria, their businesses are highly correlated to the dollar. And what do I mean by that? It's a very highly import-based economy. Um, Some businesses import their merchandise from overseas and you spent a certain amount of dollar uh, naira to acquire a dollar to bring in your items, and you've not sold out that stock, and the prices, you know, naira goes against you. So it's always a constant struggle for a lot of businesses. That's one, and then it's also a problem for them because they can't easily assess the US dollars. So we are seeing situations where right. a lot of businesses are leveraging USDC to make their last mile payments to their their suppliers in Southeast Asia, Europe, even North America. So. It costs, like I said, it costs across a whole lot. It's, it's coming down to real life solutions right now. Um, some two, three years ago, it was strictly speculative reasons. I need USDC to trade to get that Solana, get that Ethereum, you get me. But now, mm-hmm. actually, people are using this for real life, you know, transactions, payments, cross-border payments, invoice payments. So, yes, it's, it's, it's a real need right now in the, in the ecosystem. Man, that's that, that that's really strong. That's really strong, man. Look, thank you for for sharing, uh, sharing y- your Scalex, and also more importantly, sharing the story of USDC and its impact, um, you know, all around the world and especially in Africa and throughout. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, what's the future? You know, we're, we're we're coming down towards the end of the year. What can we look for for Scalex in twenty twenty four? Um, so for us, it's um. It's about scale. Um, we we decided that Nigeria was going to be the first base, and we wanted to ensure that the infrastructure was top notch in Nigeria, which is our parent market. And uh, of course, some of, some of the things we were working on were optimizing the infrastructure, then speed, which you've seen. So um, the mm-hmm. next the next step is scale. Um, we intend to be in over twenty African countries by Q two next year. And um, we are getting a lot of demands from from some partners to also give them ac- to give their users access to other markets outside of the continent, Latin America, Southeast Asia as well. So we are also speaking with some partners to make that possible. And um, then also we are looking forward to the V two of our retail solution. So we are looking to launch our app next year. It's going to be huge because um, All right. it's, it's not going to be. Um, what is the norm generally everywhere people are just bringing out wallets and all that no we're trying to do something different with that because that's what we love doing so it's also going to be all i can the alpha I'll drop is is definitely going to be heavier on usdc because um of course leveraging the programmable wallets of circle 
And um, we're looking forward to launching that in Q1 and um, definitely we'll carry along some. Man, I can't wait for the follow-up next year when we uh, talk about what uh, that retail. Definitely reach out to me. I want the exclusive. Okay, I want to share with the people like right away as soon as it launches. So let me know. Definitely. That's extremely excited. Yeah. Um, and then finally for, so retail retailers can... Um, integrate your integrate Scalex from a retail side. Uh, I would love to also maybe do a follow-up. Maybe, maybe that's a good idea for a technical video where we can show how retailers could easily access and start to use this, you know, for their needs, how businesses could use this for this, for their needs. So that, that'd be a great, great follow-up video that we could, we can go ahead and plan out. Awesome. Looking forward to that. All right. Well, look, I hope that, uh, you know, A, everyone listening got to learn a little more insight on how USDC is uh, a, a solution for developers to create, um, as in his own words, uh, real valuable use cases to help everyday folks uh, live better and have a more equitable life. Uh, throughout the world. Uh, hopefully this inspires you. Uh, we'll put some links down, um, some great videos that we have so you can learn more about USDC. Uh, a lot of our, we have some more quick start guides as well so you can learn how you can maybe start testing it out yourself, start building. Uh, and then absolutely there'll be a link for Scalex. So that way you can look, do some more research yourself, check out what they're doing and follow um, follow this team as they continue to build out uh, resources. And it's just great, man. It's inspiring to me to, to, to see that, you know, uh, folks like yourself are taking this to the next level. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. Awesome.